The Galaxy Note 10 Plus is packed with a ton of settings that you can choose to personalize your phone. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you my top 10 settings you need to change right now to make this customized for you. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. If you own a Note 10 Plus or a Note 10, be sure to hit subscribe because I'm going to teach you all the things that you can do with your Galaxy Note device. So let's get right into this. The first thing you'll notice about your Note 10 is the colors are a little bit different if you've used a Samsung phone before, they just look slightly off. So to adjust this, we're gonna head into the settings of the phone and you can find the settings app or you can go down to the notification tray and select the settings right there. And we're gonna head into the display right here. Now there are a ton of different display settings, but we're gonna head right here into screen mode. So right now it is set to natural, which looks pretty good, but I like the vivid. So here you can see the natural and then the vivid just add a little bit more color, a little bit more dynamic. And then you have some other settings you can adjust. So if you want it more cool, you could move down here. Or if you want the screen to be more warm, you could go up there. And then in the advanced settings, you can actually adjust the individual colors in case you want to have your screen have a certain look. So there you go. That is the first setting adjusting to vivid screen type. Now next we're gonna customize our phone with a custom wallpaper and lock screen. Now there are a bunch of ways that you can do this. One easy way to do this is to pinch the screen and go into the wallpapers and here in the Galaxy themes, there are a bunch of wallpapers you can download or you can buy. So there's these multi-pack wallpapers. Right now it's set to this video wallpaper lock screen. So anytime you see the video, that means that it's going to play like down here, there are some other video ones. Or you can choose these preset wallpapers, but uh, I'm really into superheroes. So I've actually pre-downloaded some wallpapers that I want to use. So I've gone and downloaded some wallpapers right here. So we're gonna add this to our home screen. And then I'm just going to select the settings from the gallery and select set as wallpaper. And you can choose where you want it. I want this on the home screen. So we're going to add it there and make sure that your motion effect is off so that if it's already aligned for your Note 10, it will fit just fine. We're gonna hit set wallpaper. So then next we're going to choose a new live wallpaper. So you can choose any video file that you have on your phone and you will need to crop it down to 15 seconds. So I actually found a GIF that I want to use. So here's a GIF that was created with all of these different superheroes, so I really like this. So we're gonna select the menu up here and we're going to select set as wallpaper. Now you could add this to your home screen, but it's not going to play on the home screen because it's a GIF, it's just going to show a picture. But on the lock screen, it actually lets us convert it into a video. So all I did was select lock screen, it's converting it into that video file, and then we'll be able to add it to our lock screen. And then here it gives us an option to trim it down if we want. I'm going to actually hit edit. There's one little frame I wanna cut out of here. Let's see if I can do it. We're gonna hit done, see if that fixes it. Close enough. And then I'm gonna hit set wallpaper. And now when I lock my phone, tap the screen twice, there you can see the live video. Now, if you just touch on the screen or move the screen a little bit, you can see it keep playing. And then you swipe to unlock and it goes right to your home. So there you can see the Iron Man wallpaper that's been set and then we have that lock screen. And I've used a bunch of different kinds of live wallpaper videos before, so I'll leave a link to those in the description below. So next we're gonna adjust the always on display settings. So the always on display is right here on the screen. You can't see it right now, but when I tap the screen, there you can see the time, the date, battery life, and some other information. I really like that actually to display always. So if I look at my phone, I can instantly know the time. So we're going to double tap and go into the phone, and we're gonna pull down the notification tray and pull it down again to go into the settings here, and we're going to look for always on display. So right here we have always on display, and if we tap on the words, it's gonna give us three different options. So here it is set to tap to show, but then I can set to show always, or I can set to show as scheduled. So maybe I want it to show up at a certain time, I could do that, but I want it to have the show always set. So I hit done, and now if I lock the screen, there you can see that it is showing the always on display. And then you'll see notifications down here and if you double tap those, you'll actually jump right into those notifications. Now next I'm going to adjust the resolution of my screen. Now if you have a Note 10, you are not able to do this, but with the Note 10 Plus, you can come in here into display 
and here we have screen resolution. Now, by default, it is set at the 202080 by 1080. So it is not showing the full resolution in which this phone is capable of. So if you're really into pixel peeping and you wanna see the highest resolution possible, make sure you select the WQHD Plus as that will do that. You may notice a little bit of a battery life drain, but for the most part, the screen is just going to look outstanding. So if you change it to this and you notice battery life has gotten worse, just come back in here and change it back to the 1080p. So once we select apply, now the screen resolution has been updated and it looks very crispy. With number five, we're going to adjust the quick brightness settings. So if we come here to the notification tray, pull this down, right here you can see the brightness is there. So to get to the brightness, I have to keep pulling it down just like that. But I don't wanna do that. I want it to be easier to access. So if I select the drop down right here, I have the option to change adaptive brightness, so I'm gonna keep that on, but I do want to show the brightness controls on the top. So I'm gonna turn that on, select done. Now you can see that when I pull this down, right there I have the brightness controls. I don't have to do anything else. Um, pull it down again, it's all right there at the top. Now with that, let's talk about volume. So if I change the volume and I pull this down, I have media volume, ringtone volume, Bixby voice volume, all that. But for the most part, I always have my ringtone off. I never actually have it play noise while the phone is ringing. But if you come down here, you can turn on use volume keys for media. So when I turn that on, every time I press the volume, it's only going to adjust it for media and not for my ringtone because I never actually use that. So if you don't ever use your ringtone as well, that's definitely a feature I would turn on. Now let's talk about securing our device. So if we go into the settings, and then we go down here to biometrics and security, we have a few different ways in which we can protect our phone. So here we have face recognition, and then here we have fingerprint. So face recognition is actually really fast. When you go through this, you do need to add a pin or a pattern. So I'm just gonna add a quick pin here. And then are you wearing glasses? No, I am not. And then it needs to scan your face. Okay, my face is now registered, and here you could have it hide certain content on the lock screen when you have the lock there. So we're gonna select done, and then here we have some other settings for the face unlock. So let's try that out. So let's say I want to unlock my phone. There you can see it's looking for me. As soon as it finds me, it unlocks, and then I can swipe and get into the phone. Now you also have the option to use your fingerprint on the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. So we're going to go into the fingerprint, add in our pin code, and now it wants us to scan our finger. So right there, that's the only portion of the screen you can press your finger, but through these tips, you'll be able to quickly unlock your phone using your fingerprint. So here, we're just going to press right there, and then you're actually just going to move it to the edges um, just so that it gets a full scan of your fingerprint. Now, I am using the Whitestone Dome Glass Screen Protector. So far, it's actually worked really well. So I've done my right thumb so far. I'm actually going to add my left thumb on here. Um, just so it kind of has both in the same fingerprint. Uh, I don't know if that's recommended by Samsung, but this is what I do just to make it scan fast and being able to easily use either thumb if I want to. So then going to move it around and then it has scanned 100%. So I'm going to select done. And then here you have some other settings as well. You could add another fingerprint if you want, but then I'm going to hit home Let's lock this back up. And so I'm going to press right here. And there it said no match, but if we push again, it's going to go right in. So it will take a bit of time to learn where that is, but if you go to your lock screen, just press right there, instantly it goes in. I don't have to wait at all. So one more time, I'm going to press right here and it jumps right into the phone. So that is how you add a fingerprint or the face unlock feature. Now, if you have both of them turned on, it is looking for the face as well as the fingerprint at the same time. So whatever it sees first, it will unlock it that way. Moving on, we're gonna talk about the side buttons. So as you have noticed, the power button is no longer on the right side. It has moved over here to the left side and it's not a power button anymore. So if you press it once, it's going to lock and unlock your phone but if you hold it down, it's going to open Bixby. Well, that's cool, but I wanna adjust this to exactly what I want it to do. Another quick tip is if you wanna take a screenshot, you hold down the volume down and the power for just a second, and it takes a screenshot just like you would expect. But if we want to adjust those settings, we can hold down the volume down and the power for a little bit longer, and it takes us to this menu where you can turn off the power, you can restart, 
change the emergency mode, or here you have side key settings. So now we can actually adjust what each of those functions do. So if I double press the camera right now, it isn't set to do anything. And that's something that I really like to double press and it will quickly launch the camera. So here I can quickly launch the camera, or if I wanted to, I could open Bixby, or if I want to open an application, I could do that as well. So maybe there's a certain app you want it to always open, you can come in here and do that. So I'm gonna set this to quick launch the camera. And then now you have press and hold. So let's say I want to wake up Bixby. You could do that or I can completely turn off Bixby right there out of the box without any other applications. And then I can have it set to the power off menu, which is really awesome that we have all of these features now um, right out of the box. So depending on what you like, you can fully customize that. Let's go to the home screen. Now there is one other way to power off the phone. If you pull down the notification shade right there, you will see the power icon and you can go into that menu as well. So now double tap the button, jumps right into the camera, hold down the button and it pulls up the power menu. So thank you Samsung for those options. Now let's talk about unlocking the phone. So you've seen that I can double tap the screen and it will take you to the lock screen. There is no longer a pressure sensitive power button like on the Note 8 and the Note 9 right here. So another way to actually unlock your phone is lift to wake. So this is a setting that you do have to change. You go into settings and then we're going to go to advanced features and we're gonna go down to motion and gestures. So in here, there is an option called lift to wake. So make sure that's on. There is where you can turn on the double tap to wake uh, or turn it off if you don't like that. And you have a few other options in here. But now let's lock the screen. So let's say the phone is just sitting there and I pick it up. Now it instantly opens up. I don't have to double tap the screen or anything and it starts scanning for my fingerprint or my face as well. So next we're gonna pull out the S Pen and adjust some of the settings here. So here you have what's called Air Command. So here it's gonna show you your favorite applications that you've selected every time you pull out the S Pen. So if there's an app here that you don't wanna see, you can actually hold down and drop it in the Remove and it will move it. But if I wanna add and customize this, I can select Add Shortcuts. And then over here I have the specific S Pen features, or I have every application on my phone down here. So you can choose any app that you want to show up over here. So they have this new right on calendar. So I'm gonna tap on that, it shows up on the side. I don't use too many of those, but let's say I wanted to use Adobe Acrobat Reader or whatever application I want. I use the 3D Scan a lot or Adobe Fill, just whatever app that you like to use with the S Pen, you can customize that right here. And uh, let's add Bixby routines just for fun. So now when I go back, um, even though that menu's hidden, you can actually just get close to the screen and press the button and it will pop back up. Or there should be this tiny little icon with a pen on it where you can tap that and it pops it up as well. So then you can go in and choose your favorite application just like that with the S Pen. Now, if you really wanna dive into the settings of the S Pen, you can just tap the settings icon right there. And then you have a bunch of different things right here. So if we go into Air Actions, we can actually customize what happens when we hold down the button. So may, right now it's set to open the camera, but we could have that set to any application that we want as well. So I'll dive more into all the things that you can do with this, but that's something you could adjust right now. Now, another thing that I like to do is I come down here and there's an option for use multiple S Pens. So I actually have a few other S Pens right here. If I turn that on and put my S Pen back in here, these S Pens will now work. This is a Stedler digital pen, so it works no problem. And then when I went to the Samsung Unpacked event, they had these other S Pens as well with a button included, which is pretty cool. So now I can use these S Pens without having to pull out my S Pen. If that feature was off, I no longer can use the S Pen. So if I tap to turn it on, now I can use that S Pen again. So pretty cool feature if you have some of these extra pens or if you have like a Galaxy Tab S4 or you're gonna get the Tab S6, you can use that pen on your phone and the phone pen on your tablet. So the last setting that you should customize is your keyboard. So go into an application like your text messaging app where you can pull up the keyboard. So here, I've already customized mine to be the dark theme. And then you have a bunch of different options up here. You can choose a GIF or you can choose other stickers. Um, but one of the new things that I really like, so let's write a little message right here, is if you hold down 
on the spacebar, you can actually do a few different actions. So right here, there's a little microphone. So if you hold down on that, it's going to pull up the voice recognition app so that it can then enter what you say onto the keyboard. But if we go back and then we go into the settings, and then if we go to swipe, touch, and keyboard, we can actually adjust that to be the cursor control, which is pretty cool. So if we go back now, I can hold this down and then I can quickly slide through and move around anywhere in my little message so that I could edit it or whatever. So that's really cool, but I actually really like to change the keyboard. So I highly recommend going to the Play Store and going and searching for Gboard. So this is the Google keyboard. Now you can download this. It looks like there's an update. Might as well update it right now. So download that one as well as download the Google handwriting input. So once I have both of those installed, once you go through them for the first time, it kind of shows you how to install them. So now that I'm back in the messaging application, I can actually jump between keyboards by pressing the little keyboard icon down here. So here I'm set to Samsung keyboard, but we want to actually select the Gboard. So now I have this different keyboard. Now there are a ton of different settings that you can adjust within Gboard. And you can adjust all the settings by holding down the emoji here and going into the settings icon. So first we have preferences. Uh, we can add a number row, I like that. We can have the show emoji switch key, I like that. Here we can have the show emojis in symbol keyboard, yeah, that's great. Uh, you could turn on a battery saver mode. Down here you can turn on the long press for symbols, which the Samsung keyboard has by default. So that all looks good. Then down here we can choose a theme. So if I want my background to be a certain picture that's here, or I can actually add my own photo right here, um, you could do that, but I like this blue one right here. And then you could have a keyboard uh, borders there. I'm gonna select apply. And now we go back, and here we have our fully customized keyboard. You have a few different options. You can use stickers, you can search for GIFs really easily, and it's pulling in all kinds of different GIF platforms. And then here you could customize. You have the instant change theme, one-handed, translate, floating, or you could go into the settings. And then there's the Google search right here. So if there's something that you wanna search for, maybe a definition or learning how to spell something, I, I use that all the time, or other different things, you can do that right here within the Gboard application. Well, you may be asking, why would I switch to this when the Samsung keyboard has the text option? So with the Gboard keyboard, I can actually hold down on the space bar and then I can pull up the other Google handwriting input. So I can pull that up and then here I can write. And I think this one is pretty fast and it's very responsive and it really is good at understanding what I write. So if I wanna jump back to the keyboard, I just select this little world icon and then it's gonna jump back and forth. So going back into the settings and the preferences, here you could have it show the emoji keyboard or the language. You can't do one or the other, but let's keep it on the language for now because um, with the S Pen, this is really nice. You just press this button right here and it jumps back and forth between the two keyboards, which is really good. And then let's say you are writing and you write pizza, right here, the emoji of pizza actually popped up. So I can just tap on that instead of having to go and search for that specific emoji. And those are my top 10 settings that you must change as soon as you get your Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus or the Note 10. If you guys have any further questions about any of these, please let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see more videos all about how to customize your Note 10 Plus, make sure you select the playlist over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.